So let's get into topic one. Rushing out the door, all right? It has been more than a hell of a week for WNBA star Brittany Griner, but she has finally been released from a Russian prison and will be home with her family for Christmas. That's right. Now, President Biden said he's working to bring home every American wrongfully detained anywhere in the world, including U.S. Marine Paul Whelan. But is it too soon to ask the question, where is the energy for people unjustly locked up for weed right here in the good old U.S. of A? When will we release some of our own political prisoners? I'm ecstatic that Britney will be home for the holidays, but we have to discuss, okay? Uh, so, Dr. Umar, why doesn't America free its own political prisoners? H. Rap Brown, Mumia Abu-Jamal, Leonard Pelter. Are we only good at pointing out other people's messes? I think so. I think America has a very high price on mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Private prisons are big business. Regular prisons are big business. And I think that America would much rather play global police than take care of its own business at home. Ooh, okay. Mm. Okay. Now, we had this discussion before, but it feels hypocritical that Biden can see how unjust Britney's charge was, but not pardon everybody locked up on a federal level for a nonviolent weed conviction here in America. You know, expunge some records. What you think, Cass? I think uh, Britney's in an unenviable position right now, right? Yeah. Because she's been in Russia for the past, what, eight months, ten months, it seems yeah. like? She literally wore the stars and stripes on her body yeah. representing our country. And now when she comes home, she's not just going to have the people that's happy for her. She's going to have people that were like, yo, my mom and dad, they served. How come yeah, they yeah. still have to, you know, I have, uh, you know, how come they couldn't come home or nothing like yeah. that? And, you know, her being an athlete, her being somebody of a big, you know, stature and have a whole lot of platform, she's unwillingly becoming this, like, political prisoner when she comes back, right? Yeah. Like, everybody's going to look at her as the face of prisoner swaps. And none of us are experts at that, but right. we're, we find ourselves to try and be experts at sports. So we want to compare it to sports and yeah. say, oh, you're trading a WNBA player for somebody who's been called the merchant of death. It, it, they, they, it feels like an unfair trade. It feels un it's like you're trading Steph Curry for like Frank Nilakina or something like that. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. people who may not understand what that is, but it's a bad trade. It's a bad trade. Yeah, <laughs> like Clearly nobody would make that. You guys trade. don't know that. <laughs> Sam, what do you think, man? I think, I mean, we got fleeced by the front office of Russia, for sure. I mean, they really, I mean, Putin's like soiling himself, falling down staircases, and he's still just playing Biden here. I mean, yeah. this is crazy, you know? And, and the worst part is Britney's going to come home. She's going to get greeted at the airport by Biden. Yeah. And you know he's going to tell her like a long, boring story. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's going to be like, let me tell you about one time. She's like, I've been in prison, please. I, <laughs> so let, me, let me go home. You know, other Americans, you know, like history teacher Mark Fogel and, uh, like, I mentioned former Marine. Brother Paul. of Jared at Subway. <laughs> Wait, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have totally forgotten about Jared at Subway. But I mentioned former Marine yeah. Paul Whelan. Uh, you know, they're still in Russian prisons, and I'm very happy for Britney, but it feels like we can only get people to rally around a cause when celebrity is involved. Why is that, Dr. Uma? I'm not sure that Britney's case is as much about celebrity mm -hmm. on the global level as it is about the survival of the Democratic Party in black America. Mm. Uh, when we look at what happened to her, many of us have seen this happen to other political prisoners in the country, and we're pretty fed up with the situation. Yeah, yeah. And I think as the Democrats get prepared for the next presidential election, given the fact that President Trump just announced his candidacy, mm -hmm. it was important that the Congressional Black Caucus go home for Christmas with something on the, under the tree. Brittany Greider's freedom can be that gift to black America to try to woo them back to the Democratic Party in time for the 2024 elections. Well, with that said, what does this do for the Biden administration? Does it does it make you respect them more? Not necessarily. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. But not necessarily on my part, right? Like, it feels like, like Dr. Umar said, that she's throwing black America a bone, right? It's yeah. like, when it comes to the, the voting and what we just went through with midterm elections, they're going to say, all right, what did the Democratic Party accomplish in the last couple of months or the last couple of years? And now they have a big, shiny toy to show off and like, see, look, we went yeah. to Russia. They're in the middle of a war. There's all these things going on, and we got somebody home. The unfortunate part about it, like I said earlier, is now BG is this face of prisoner swaps. And now, you know, thankfully with the We Are BG Foundation, she's going to continue that fight to get, you know, Americans that were wrongfully detained back home because now she's got a story to tell. Like, now basketball is the least of her concerns at this yeah. moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, unwillingly enough, just by carrying a, uh, some cannabis oil, you know what I'm saying? Now when she comes home, she's going to be the face of everybody thinking, well, 
how do we get all these uh, how uh, all these criminals back home or all these people that committed crimes back home to their families at it, Christmas? Basketball might be the least of her concern, but Phoenix is playing horribly right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> they can, how they long before use, we get her back? They out can use there, a forward right now. They could use some size. <laughs> She'll be back. I'm sure. Um, Umar, what do you think? Does, does, what does this do for the Biden administration? Does it? Well, do you respect them more? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, I remember when Joe Biden was having a conversation with you and he told yep. black people that if you don't vote for him, you're not black. Mm -hmm. And then after he got elected, he took care of every other constituency except black America. When they look at Brittany Griner, they're looking at four distinct voter bases. You're looking at the celebrity base. You're looking at the LGBTQ base. You're looking at the woman base. And you're looking at the African-American base. A lot of These are going to be very four very critical voter bases come election time. So they're really just arming up for that war against Donald Trump. Mm. I agree. Uh, That's a great point. And uh, I think it checks off. I think it touches more boxes than a WNBA player. Hey, hey. <laughs> Speaking of the, the WNBA, um, right. will folks start supporting the WNBA now? Or is this the most supported WNBA player we'll ever get? I, I've been to a couple of WNBA games, but then Dolan moved them to uh, Westchester. I'm like, I'm not going on a train, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'll go in there at the Garden. Because, yeah. I mean, you, we should be supporting the WNBA, right? Well, let's not get it twisted. The yeah. WNBA has definitely been on an upswing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. they're still not a profitable company, you know what I mean? They're still losing money every year. But ratings are up, viewership is up, you know what I mean? Like, a bunch of women athletes have been rising for the past several years yeah. because yeah. of the WNBA. So I think... Un the unfortunate sort of circumstance of this whole thing is that when Brittany Griner eventually gets on the court, and I promise you right now it's probably not the one thing she's thinking about, but when she does get on the court, she's going to bring this entire new audience with her just to see what happens. I hope so, because, you know, the only way the, the, the WNBA is going to grow is if we support it, and then hopefully they, she won't, other players won't have to go overseas and that, end up in situations like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, uh, athletes like her, lots of athletes in the WNBA, they go overseas every single season because yeah. the WNBA season is just so short. They only play for three months. That's and right. they get more money in Russia. They get more money overseas. So hopefully with this, you know, unfortunately this, you know, whole, whole thing happened with her for the past several months, we're going to hope that this is going to rise the profile of the WNBA. That's right. And people see. And you, and you got uh, you to gotta celebrate it. I mean, I see a lot of tweets saying, like, well, there are still people, you know, trapped in Russia, but you have to celebrate her being back. You know, I saw these, Absolutely. all these posts, you know, like, thank God she's back. Do uh, you think anyone in Russia is like, finally, the merchant of death is home? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know.